Good morning, detective. I hope you were comfortable last night. Bonjour, mademoiselle. The room was more than pleasant, merci. I'm afraid my mind was not in a state to enjoy it to its full potential, though. I can't imagine any of us slept soundly last night. Hopefully guilt will be weighing heavily on someone's shoulders this morning. I'm sorry if I was not much help last night, detective. On the contrary, your inside knowledge of the guests was of great help to my investigation. But there are many more questions that require answers. His position? You mean about him living here? Oui. Even in a house this size, you must see a lot of each other. I enjoyed having him here. When I was away with Gideon, it was comforting to know Maman was not alone. Although, his work with Mr. Da Silva has kept him away from the house of late. What can you tell me about their relationship, working or otherwise? There is not much to tell, only that there is no love lost between them. He was always quite private about his work. I know that he was helping Mr. Da Silva with some safety matters. I found a check addressed to the Major from Monsieur Da Silva. It noted security consulting. Ah, that's right, security. With his military training, he helped Mr. Da Silva prepare for any trouble with the strikes. A development? Oh, detective, I knew I could count on you. It may not be the news you had wished for, though. Another letter has been found. Addressed to me? I don't know how much more I can take of this. Pardonnez-moi, mademoiselle. Although it has been written in the same manner, using similar phraseology, it was not sent for your eyes, rather, the Major's. Or at least that is how it seems. I'm sorry, Detective. I don't understand. It is addressed to him or not? I found it in the Major's study yesterday while conducting my preliminary search. Whether he is the author of the letter or the recipient, I am still yet to discover. Heavens no! He could not do that! You did not hesitate for a moment. Why would he do such a thing? A and then to send a letter to himself? It just doesn't make sense. Merci for your time, mademoiselle. You are to a detective what an umbrella is to a traveler on a wet day. Useful? Exactement. Good morning, detective. You slept well? I'm afraid I did not. I was hoping for at least a moment of pleasant slumber, but alas, it was not to be. Finding the Major's killer is the only thing that will put my mind at ease. In that case, detective, what can I do to help? In that snow. If someone was out there, we'd have another body on our hands. 
I realize how strange it sounds. I would not believe it myself if I had not seen it with my own eyes. Staff have reported seeing things in the dark before, but it always just turns out to be shadows. It was likely just your mind playing tricks. I'm afraid our Lizzie is not well. I think the events of yesterday were too much for her. We'll have to just make do without her this morning. As Wordsworth once stated, rest and be thankful. Perhaps a chance of peace and relaxation will work wonders. She is currently eating breakfast alone in the dining room. It's how she prefers it. But if you wish to speak with her now... I would, but I'm afraid I found this morning that the telephone lines aren't working. The snow continued through the night and must have damaged them. Even if we could use the telephone, I don't think anyone would be able to reach us. In that case, it will be up to myself alone to solve the case. I'll let you know if anything changes. But until some of the snow clears, enough for the carriages to arrive, we are snowed in. Taken care of. Master Dramir and his brother, after sobering up, helped me move him into the cellar. Best place for the time being. Très bien. I imagine there is no reason for anyone to go down there. Besides me, no one. Once this snow clears, we will be able to move him from the house. Your assistance has been most valuable as always. Countess, I wonder if I could ask you some questions. That is it, detective? No small talk, no inflating of one's ego? I am afraid not, Countess. With the murderer still loose in the house, my mind is rather preoccupied. Well then, detective. Perhaps I can be of some assistance. Comment, madame? I thought you might like to know what I found on the Major's body. That certainly piqued your interest. A man has been murdered, and you find it acceptable to fool around and joke! Oh, please, detective. Do you really think so little of me? Archibald asked for my assistance. He knows of my medical training from my days as a nurse, and I thought I would be able to help. Even if it has been some years. It was not his place to grant you access to the body. I shall remember to keep my assistance to myself next time. The single stab wound, which you no doubt already knew. The knife was held in their right hand. I would say their predominant hand. Judging by the depth of the wound, I would say there was no great force put into the strike. More a sign of defense than attack. If I had to say what weapon was used, a small sharp knife or dagger. 
I understand it may be difficult for one to keep such information to yourself, but I ask you to try. Your involvement has already tainted my investigation. <laughs> you are welcome, detective. S'il vous plaît, Comtesse, keep this information to yourself. Bonjour, Monsieur Damir. Detective Poirot, how are you? The truth, Monsieur. With each step towards uncovering the blackmailer, I am thrown two steps back as to the identity of the Major's killer. Is there something I can help you with? Archibald came to me and asked for my help in the matter. My brother and I dealt with it. Merci for your help. It is a job that only the professionals should have to undertake. It's a job that had to be done. Although it may have affected my brother more than I. How so? At the sight of the body, the color drained from his face. Once we had reached the cellar, Zakaria took himself straight off to bed, without even a good night. Felix and Madame Vandenbosch are the only ones with keys, as far as I'm aware. Oh, and Archibald. I'm sure I heard Felix asking him to return something to it once. I have not seen him since last night. I'm sure he will have been fine after a good night's sleep. He does not need his younger brother checking in on him. Perhaps that is exactly what he requires. I'm not sure what he told you yesterday, detective, but he's a big boy. I worry that may not be the case, monsieur. His time in the war came up in conversation more than once during our conversations. He's still talking about it. I thought talking to the doctor would have stopped all of that. Merci, monsieur. What a revelation! Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. If it will help you find the Major's killer, of course. When he returned from the war, he was a different man. Everything became about what he had seen. I cannot speak from experience, but I can only imagine the horrors he must have witnessed. The first weeks he would wake in the night, screaming. I found him one night, cowering behind the desk in the study. And when I tried to help him out from beneath it, well, it was the first time I had ever feared for my life. That is not why you two are no longer close? 
and not at all detective. We were always very different in nature. While I had always wanted to follow an academic path, Zakaria was more of a free spirit, or at least as free as our father and the laws would allow. And yet, he ended up in the military. Quite the contrast. Our father demanded that he at least try to do something with his life. And when some of his friends joined the army, he signed up with them. It wasn't long before he moved out from the family home after his return from the army. I always assumed that he had put the war and everything that came with it behind him and was moving on. But now I... Ah. Bonjour, madame. May I offer my condolences for your loss? Thank you, detective, but they are not necessary. What can I do for you? I was hoping you would be prepared to answer some questions. If I must. I'm sure you're aware he was not the easiest man to get along with. His hot temper made him a number of foes. A hot temper is reason enough to kill a man. His mouth often acted before his brain. Perhaps... 
seeing as I heard Mr. Becker's in what I would describe as an unnecessarily loud exchange of words yesterday, he would be my first suspect. You heard them yourself. How could I not? The volume they were shouting at, I could hear them from the study in my room. You did not think it fitting to tell me this yesterday? I didn't think Felix was going to wind up dead and a murderer loose in my house. My apologies, detective. I assume you are talking about the supposed blackmail letter. Oui, madame. You know of it? It arrived shortly after the first. Rather coincidental, if you ask me. I'm not sure I understand what you're trying to say, madame. He no doubt had secrets hidden away. But do you honestly think Felix had anything of value to his name worth threatening him for? Perhaps you should enlighten me. Well, he was here, living in my house, eating my food, prepared by my staff. Does that answer your question, detective? I wouldn't put it past him to have written it himself, in the hopes of getting some sympathy from me. And the other letters? He probably wrote those too. If Angeline paid the first, that would have given him the money to pay the second letter. He is the White Knight, saves the day and expects to live here happily ever after. What is it you wish to know? You two have been friends for some time now, and while I do not mean to pry, has your relationship only... If you are trying to insinuate that Mr. De Silva and I are running around like schoolchildren, you could not be further from the truth. He was friends with my husband, for goodness sake. Oui, I understand they worked together. Investments, if I am correct. Mr. De Silva was the voice of reason that my husband should have listened to more often, instead of throwing our money at businesses that were already on the verge of bankruptcy. Merci, madame. I shall not bother you any further. Aha. Hmm. Bonjour, madame. You must be the wonderful cook. Wonderful and modest, sir. I am Rihanna. My taste buds thank you for the ravishing meal last night. It has been some time since I ate so well. Glad to hear it, sir. Uh, sit up, madame. A detective is fine. In that case, 
Mademoiselle is fine for me, and I will ignore your presumption of marriage. Très bon, Mademoiselle. That's right. I've seen staff come and go, but a house always needs a trustworthy cook. I agree. But if I was to eat what you prepare every day, I fear I may be the size of La Maison. Not a bad thing, detective. You could do with some meat on your bones. Well, with the snow still not clearing, we may be stuck here for the weekend. Perhaps I should look to adjust my pantalon buttons. I did. Monsieur Archie told me what had happened. Bruises can swell fast, so I took him some ice to bring it down. How was the Major when you saw him? Grumpy, as always. I suppose one would not take kindly to being punched as he was. Punched or not, he was as ungrateful as ever. I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, mademoiselle. Magnifique. Is there something I can help you with, detective? You have got the wrong end of the stick, detective. Maman has snapped at him recently, but it was nothing more than that. It was something to do with the letter. I heard them in the library before Maman shouted and he stormed out of the room past me. Could it have been the blackmail letter that instigated their argument? Why would Maman be upset with him over the letter? Madame is of a very different opinion from yourself regarding his connection with the letters. She believes him to be the author. That is what she told you? She has always been one to make a quick, if not rash, decision, but she cannot truly believe that. I don't recall telling him directly. I did not want Maman to find out it had been paid. If he knew, surely she would. Madame believes he may have been behind all the letters, and taking your payment of the first, then used it to pay the second and be the hero in you and your mother's eyes. I never knew Maman had such an imagination. Where would she get a story like that from? That is a question I was hoping you may be able to answer. You have met him? Do you really think he is capable of such a devious plan? It is a plan only the most crooked and underhanded could create. Is that the Major? I am not so sure. I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, Mademoiselle. Things are beginning to become clearer.
Is there something I can help you with, detective? I'm afraid it had been that way for some time. Maman is not forthcoming with her emotions, as I'm sure you are aware. But I could tell she had not been happy with their arrangement for the last few months. What gave you that impression? There was not one particular thing that she expressed. It was just the way she spoke to him and of him when he wasn't present. I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, mademoiselle. Whatever you need, Detective. Certainly, Detective. Pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Another success. I never doubted myself.
I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Detective Poirot, I have been asked to inform you that Lady Vandenbosch has returned to her room, and she wishes not to be disturbed. Merci. Madame certainly has mastered the art of subtlety. They may not be the exact words she used, but I am sure you can imagine. Excuse me, I have some further duties to attend to in the pantry. Thank you. 
I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Detective Poirot, what do you think you are doing in here? I have something I wish to discuss with you. Well, I hope it is important enough to justify barging into one's bedroom. I assure you it is. Good, because this has gone on far too long. We are snowed in this house while a murderer runs amok. I can understand your frustrations, but it is not as simple as... You were once an incompetent officer, and now it seems you are just as incompetent as a detective. If I was not being lied to and misled at every turn, perhaps the murderer would already be in custody. I hope you are not suggesting I had something to do with Felix's murder. I am suggesting that if I had the support that everyone claims they are offering, we would be in a very different situation. If you have something you want to ask, I suggest you ask me now. We met before Angeline was born, so he was often at the house when she was growing up. And where was it you two met? I was attending an event. Felix was also in attendance as a serving officer. A conversation was struck. So it was not through the Viscount that you two met? I did not require my husband to start conversations on my behalf. It was you that instigated it then. Oh, my, my, detective. That active imagination of yours has taken you on quite some journey. Edwin spent much of his time away on business before Angeline was born. Felix was a welcome distraction from the loneliness of the house. You were alone in the house. The staff continued their duties, of course, but trying to get any sort of sophisticated or cultured conversation from them was like drawing blood from a stone. And when Angeline was born? Edwin remained at home. It was his duty as a father. And the Major? He had his own business and life to tend to, but we remained in touch via letter. Around the time of Edwin's passing, Felix had relocated to the area.
I'm sure he has hundreds of letters in there. Most of them could and should have been thrown away a long time ago. You are going to have to be more specific. I refer to the letter addressed to you, the one of a romantic nature. Romantic nature? Please, detective. Felix did not have a romantic bone in his body. He made his intentions quite clear in the letter. I must admit, I myself was surprised. You really do have quite the active imagination, detective. If that is how you wish to interpret it, so be it. But I can assure you, the Major did not think of me that way, and certainly did not include it in a letter. I think that is all for now. Merci, madame. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Is this really necessary? He may have stayed in my home, but Felix was a grown man, detective. What he kept, hidden or otherwise, has nothing to do with me. But it does not surprise you that he had such a photograph? We have been friends, and he has been there for Angeline for many years, but you find it strange that he keeps a reminder of us. Perhaps that says more about you, Detective. What I do find strange is that if he did hold a flame for you, why he would never express it? If he did, it was not reciprocated. I have not even considered another since my husband's passing. Not that it is any of your business. I think that is all for now. Merci, madame. Detective Poirot, are you any closer to uncovering the truth of Felix's involvement with the letters? I am, mademoiselle. I can confirm that he was not the author of the blackmail letters. So the author is still out there? Oui, but it will not be long before they are apprehended and the only letters they shall be penning will be from behind iron bars. Your confidence is rather assuring. Thank you, detective. I'm sorry, detective. I did not intend to leave your mind so full of thoughts. 
No apology is required. It actually made me question my whole chain of thinking. What if there had been a collusion between them, and the Major's murder was planned, organized, and orchestrated to make the investigation seem almost impossible? Oh my, Detective, that is quite a theory. Every guest has a motive. You confirmed that with the mention of Mademoiselle Conrad and the Major's fight. Supplying one another with a rock-solid alibi would surely throw off any detective. But not you. Correct, mademoiselle. It would take much more to stamp Detective Poirot. I haven't seen that book in so long. Yes, it was a gift for my 10th birthday. I have read it from cover to cover countless times. He left such a lovely inscription, too. It sounds as though there is a side to the Major I did not get to see. Was it common for him to bring you gifts? Not common, but if he had been away for some time, he would bring me a small memento from his travels. He hasn't done that in some time, though. They were. I'm afraid they may have gathered some dust being in the storage room for so long. I kept them in hope of giving them to my child when the time comes. It sounds as though he had always cared about you. His presence at the house was comforting for us both after father died, even if sometimes he was a little too overprotective. That's right. Ever since I can remember, Felix has been around. It seems as though she has a number of support networks. The Major, her friendship with the Countess, not forgetting Monsieur Da Silva. Maman has many friends. I know how she may seem to Moss, but once you break the hard shell... There is a further shell waiting to be broken. Oh, <laughs> very good, detective. Forgive me, mademoiselle. I only jest. It's quite all right. You are not the only one that feels a razor tongue. She's grateful you are here, especially now, whether she shows it or not. They have often come to blows when it concerns Maman. They are both trying to protect her, but they themselves cannot seem to get along. She spoke of his desire to join the, uh, how do you describe it, social elite. Hmm. This isn't the first time she has vocalized that concern. She thinks the Major was just using our family name to make his way to the top. And you do not agree? I will not deny he has shown interest in Maman's social circles, but they have been friends since even before I was born. Surely all those years of friendship was not just to raise his social standing. How do you mean, detective? I imagine a house of this size is rather costly, keeping it in the immaculate condition it is in. Maman looks after the financial side of the house, but I think she has had to ask him more than once for a contribution of sorts. It is not for me to get involved. I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, mademoiselle.
cannot see the logic in this. Perhaps... What a revelation! Magnifique. Necessary. Who I allow in my house is none of your business. I do not have to explain anything to you. I did not think you were one for charity. I would not expect you to think much of anything. There is no need to talk on it any further, but I'm sure you will remember that, financially speaking, we have had our issues. He was a man that required no protection, detective, especially from me. That is the impression I had of him, which is why your defensive stance warrants questioning. Your insistent questioning on such trivial matters are getting on my last nerve. There is a murderer and a blackmailer to be found. That is your job here. How many times do I have to tell you? There was no romantic feelings between us. I have grown weary of this conversation, Poirot. There is nothing more to say. Madame, you continue to withhold the truth. And you continue to get on my last nerve. I am not obliged to tell you every detail of my private life. But when it impedes my investigation... If only you were this focused on finding the blackmailer and... Madame. Very well. I did not lie about how we met. I was attending an event, raising money for... Oh, I cannot recall now. It had been some time since I had returned home and was rather missing English soil. I was aware of Felix's invitation, or at least that, that there was to be several British officers attending the party, and... That is where our friendship began. He was a warm reminder of home, and I enjoyed conversing with him. We shared walks in the park and read together. As I said, he was a welcome distraction from the days spent alone. I shall go no further with the details, but I will say, I had no intention on being unfaithful to my husband. It was never our plan to go that far. 
Once I found out I was pregnant, I knew it had to stop. The Viscount never questioned Mademoiselle's birth? In his mind, he had no reason to, and he shouldn't have had to. It was my mistake to bear. If he knew the truth, our lives would have been ruined. I told Felix that he was to stay away, but he had no intention to. He became an uncle figure to Angeline, and they grew closer after Edwin's death. I could not tell her the truth. Too much time had passed. The secret remained only between him and I. Until now. And what were the Major's thoughts on revealing the truth? He wanted to tell her everything. He wanted her to know exactly who he was. But I told him no. It would not have been the poignant reconciliation that he expected. She would not understand. I tried to retrieve them from the safe after everyone had retired last night. But when I opened the safe, they were nowhere to be found. I assumed he must have hidden them somewhere else. When I entered the study this morning, they were as visible as a red notice on a police station wall. I would appreciate if you did not compare them to the face of a wanted felon. Pardon, madame. But that does mean someone else in the house has seen them. I, I don't understand. Why would they return them? A mystery that is still yet to be solved. must be. But I have told no one. And the Major? Felix promised me he wouldn't tell a soul, and I believed him. What even if he wanted to? You did not think anyone knew, and that is why you disregarded the letter. If you bow to these criminals, they will only try to claw more from you. I think that is all for now. Merci, madame. Detective Poirot, how is your investigation coming? Monsieur Sterling, I must admit, I have learned much more than I was expecting to. You'll be wrapping the case up soon, then. One has never finished learning, monsieur. And in this case, I shall need to continue if I am to find the Major's killer. It might help to vocalize your thinking. I'm all ears. Monsieur, would you gather the guests and staff in the salon? Right away, detective. 
Can I ask for what reason? I shall reveal all once everyone is together. 